Good morning. Welcome to our show. I'm Taryn Temple. And I'm Nadia Keshfi. It's an exciting week. Today is Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de and Mayo. And it's also just before finals week. So, you know, kind finals. of mix in celebration with the studying. Have you ever done anything to celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Last year, I went with you, actually. Oh, we did. We I forgot went and about ate that. Salitos. We did. That was a lot of fun. I've never really done a whole lot of Cinco de Mayo celebrations, but back at home, we get like a whole day off of school pretty much just to celebrate. So They do five for five. Five tacos for five dollars in Lincoln, so like that's the place to go. But yeah, five tacos. And they're not like little tacos, they're like the big tacos. That sounds, we should make a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Lincoln. But aside from the celebration, it is finals week. Finals are lingering upon us. Are you stressed? I'm not. None of my finals are comprehensive. She's not stressed. Um, none of my finals, they are hard. They're just like the end of the year, end of the chapter. Are yours? Um, some, one of mine is going to be decently hard, but everything hasn't been too bad. This is my favorite class, obviously. Oh yeah, shout out to Cal. <laughs> Thanks, Cal. <laughs> Give me an A. <laughs> yeah, we're giving you a shout out so you can get an A. <laughs> but other than that, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready for summer. I'm ready for the lake and oh. the pool to be tan. Summer, I cannot wait for summer. No. I'm so ready to just lay out in the sun. Uh, it sounds so good right now, but I feel like there's so much left that I have to do. Yep. And so I'm I don't want to pack. I haven't even thought about packing yeah, I don't, whatsoever. I don't have time to pack or necessarily want to pack. In so. other news, it's our 365th episode. That's an entire year of episodes. Of Good Morning KU. It's been a lot of fun. The crew's super fun. It's definitely been a new experience. I'm so glad I took this class and we took it together. And so It's a really fun class. It's a really fun class. Journalism 210 with Journalism Cal. Journalism 210. You can come hang out with us, be on the show, do what we do, and helps out get used to people, get to meet new people, and it's a lot of fun. It is really fun. You, um, in the class, you get to work different shows like this, and you get to meet a lot of people, and throughout like the progress of the show, you get to start doing stuff that you want. So like, Taryn likes hosting and stuff, so she's been hosting a lot. And she hosts with me. <laughs> when I can, yeah. And social media, that's like what I like doing, so. You get to kind of find out what you like to do and work with that, so yeah. we have a little bit of a clip to look back on some of the stuff we've done in these 365 episodes. And when you come back, we will have a special guest. So stick with us. Um, MSNBC posted a video of like this annual thing where you can bring your corgis to a beach. makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. I want to be a teacher because I really, really enjoy biology. Um, I get really excited about it and I want to share that excitement with other kids and try to get them interested in it as well. I want to be a teacher because I enjoy the field of math and science and I appreciate 
the opportunity to be able to teach that um, in, in interesting and creative ways to students. You Can Teach is a really special program. It's uh, uh, what we do at the University of Kansas. We just saw a little bit of the You Can Teach video, but we have Claire France here to tell us a little bit more about it. So what is You Can Teach? So it's a program for STEM majors, and it's anybody that wants to maybe be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Some people kind of end up using it as, oh, I'm not positive what I want to do, but teaching sounds interesting. And so they kind of go into it, and then typically they really like it, and they stay there. So you get um, a lot of content area work because it's not an education major. So it's just in addition to a content. So for example, I was math, and then I got my teaching license through the program as well. So Did you voluntarily do math? That's what you I did. I did, yeah, if you can believe it. Some people do choose that. It's rare. But <laughs> and how did you get involved with this? So I heard about it from my high school math teacher, actually. She knew that I was interested in maybe being a teacher. And so um, she told me about this program. And it starts out with just a one credit hour course. So you just get to kind of dip your feet in the water and see what it looks like without having to really commit a lot. And I really liked it, so I stuck with it. And how is it going to kind of help you with your future, and what do you think you're going to do with that? Well, it's perfect because I was able to get a lot of content practice, so I know a lot about math. That With an education major, I maybe would have learned a lot more about teaching and not as much about math, but this taught me about math, and then additionally, I got my teaching license with it. So it's really a great combo between the two. And then I, once you have your teaching license, you can go take a test to get certified in other areas. So I already kind of had the foundation laid, and I can add on to that if I want. But I want to teach high school math, so it's really perfect. That is so brave. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> have to deal with all those high schoolers. I agree, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. going to be tough. Another thing you might not know about Claire is she's on the Ultimate Frisbee team here, I am. which is so cool. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, and not many people I, do. How did you get involved with that? So that definitely started in high school when my friends and I heard about this random new sport, and so we started just picking up like at our football field with like big 20 on 20 games. It's supposed to be seven on seven, but we, everybody wanted to play. So, and then when I got to college, I heard about some more organized leagues. And then I found the KU team. And um, this is my fourth year on the team, and we just finished our season. Um, How was your season? It was good. Uh, we finished fifth or sixth uh, at our last tournament, and it wasn't, we, we had to get in the top three to go to nationals, so we didn't quite get there, but I still have another year, so hopefully next year. And when is your season really? So it starts in the fall. It starts right when school starts. Okay. Um, and we normally go to like three or four tournaments in the fall, but those are a little bit less competitive. And then once you get to the spring, that's our competitive season. So we have like seven or eight tournaments, and they're a lot more, uh, they're further away, and they're kind of more of a commitment, and they're better teams. Where and so do you travel for this? We travel all around, actually. So most commonly for we're called the Bettys. Most commonly for the <laughs> Bettys, um, we are kind of regional, so we'll go like maybe to Texas or Colorado or somewhere or Chicago, something like that. Um, and then for uh, my summer team, which is uh, not associated with KU, but we'll go further for those. So that's really cool. Yeah. Do you get pretty close with your teammates then? Super close. I live with all Bettys. Actually, I have a house. And there's five of us, and it's crazy. But um, all teammates, and then yeah, they're definitely my best friends too. Pretty much what you'd expect out of any and team. How do you practice? Is it just? It's pretty much just like what you'd think for any other sport. So we have drills too, and mm -hmm. we you know we warm up and we do a couple drills to start out, and then we'll do like an organized scrimmage, and um, we practice twice a week definitely, and then the A team will practice usually a third time a week, and we have workouts other days. That sounds so fun. And yeah. you actually, you went to England, right? I did. Yeah. You can brag about yourself yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> I feel a little awkward, but um, so that was last summer, and I tried out for the U.S. national team. And somehow they gave me a spot, and um, I went to England with them to compete with. There were about 25 other countries there, and um, that was for a two-week period of time. And we just played in a big tournament with all the other countries, and we ended up winning. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, which was great. That was definitely one of the best, probably the best frisbee experience I've ever had. And you obviously probably had some free time to maybe do some fun things while you were there. Yeah, absolutely. Travel. We got to do a little bit of sightseeing. Um, we had like one to two games a day, so when we weren't playing, we were able to travel around a little bit. Um, not as much as if you were to, just took a vacation there, but we still got to see the sights. That is so cool. Yeah, it that's was a blast. A really interesting thing that probably a lot of people maybe not yeah, know exist I'm that sure they might want to get involved in, you know? Absolutely. And you guys are going to play. come play <laughs> yeah. and you got I want to join. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got a spot, Taryn, whatever you mean. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you for coming. Thank After you. this, we will have another special guest, so stay with us.
And welcome back. I'm back. Or I'm here with a, our guest, Zaina Pasco, who is a senior this year, so she's going to be walking across the stage in a couple oh. weeks. So, what is your major? My major is actually general studies. That's so exciting. <laughs> so, like, what were you planning on doing with that? Um, I want to go into student affairs. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's get my master's in higher education with an emphasis on student affairs. Yeah. So that's what I plan on doing with yeah. general studies. Nothing really. It was just something that kind of happened when I went down the wrong path. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That happens for sure. It does. Um, so what are you planning on doing with your master's degree? Like, um, I want to do a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. probably like in an inner city, um, somewhere probably in like Tennessee and Memphis area. Yeah. Um, I actually did alternative break over this winter. And so they kind of opened my eyes to nonprofit organizations oh, for yeah. little kids, yeah. like a volunteer boys and girls club kind of thing. Yeah, that's interesting for sure. So um, big, exciting news. You got a job. <laughs> I did. <laughs> right I out did. of I the college, which is I very unheard of. Yeah. So what are you going to be doing with that? I will be an admissions rep in the visitor center. Here? For yes, KU. here at KU. I will that's be an so admissions cool. rep. That's so cool. Like you get to... Uh, work for your alumni, so that's yes, really it's, awesome. Congratulations! It's a dream. Yeah, it's congratulations a dream. for oh, thank sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, what does your job entail? What is this job going to entail? I will be bringing incoming freshmen to this wonderful campus. Yeah. That is what my job. I would be trying to convince them to see KU the way I see KU yeah. to show them that this is the place to be. Right, for sure. And uh, does that mean like you're going to be traveling? Are you going to like... Yes, I, I probably will be doing some traveling to That's, different states. Yeah. Um, just to fulfill those out-of-state, you know, like quotas criteria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring in all the cool kids like, like you. Like me, <laughs> yeah. like me. Shout out to Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I'm sure you're getting a little bit nostalgic, uh, this being your senior year. What would you say you're going to miss most about being an undergrad student? I think I'm going to miss... I'm actually going to miss going to classes. <laughs> Yeah. Like, not going to classes to do the work or the homework, yeah. but going to classes to meet new people, right. um, build new connections, yeah. networking. Because you are very outgoing, so. That's what I've been told. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what would you say your favorite moment or memory um, of your undergrad experience would be? I think my memorable moment would be watching McCollum implode. Yeah, that was pretty... Uh, we, yeah, we were roommates in McCollum yeah, our yeah. freshman year, and so we got to watch it fall together. <laughs> and that, that was it's pretty, pretty sad. <laughs> it was pretty sad. But we got a brick. Yeah, and <laughs> we got a memorable brick from it, so that was pretty cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show oh, today. thank you for and having me. And good luck in your new job. <laughs> That's so exciting. Um, yes. And thank you guys for tuning in for this interview. Um, stay tuned. We will be right back with the news. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. I'm Becca Carr. And I'm Caroline Davis. This is your Thursday Good Morning KU News Update. 217 extra parking spaces on campus will be lost next year. The spaces are currently in yellow zones, but will be in the way of construction by next year. Similarly to last year, KU Parking and Transit will run a lottery system to determine who gets to purchase parking passes on campus. Passes for next semester will go on sale July 1st. Chancellor Bernadette Gray-Little vetoed Senate's multicultural student government bill yesterday. The bill called for a separate Senate group to represent the multicultural demographic on campus. In an email explaining her decision, Gray Little said having two separate groups to represent the student body was against Senate codes. 
The group who created the bill said they are not giving up on the bill and will continue to try to set up meetings with the chancellor. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced there will be stricter regulations on e-cigarettes that will put many e-cigarette companies out of business. Each individual e-cigarette must undergo FDA approval just like tobacco products. Some businesses worry that many people will want to switch back to using tobacco products, but the FDA said that people have the right to know what they're inhaling. Donald Trump is the only remaining GOP candidate for the upcoming elections. Both Ted Cruz and John Kasich dropped the race, Cruz saying he was confident in Trump's campaign. Now all of the candidates are turning their campaigns toward Hillary Clinton, who is still in the race with Bernie Sanders. Janet Jackson delayed the second leg of her tour after announcing her first pregnancy on Twitter yesterday. Jackson is two weeks shy of turning 50. She plans on returning on her tour after she and her husband have their family planned out. Ellen DeGeneres is announcing the launch of her new digital network. DeGeneres will partner with YouTube star Tyler Oakley to run the content. It will feature various web stars such as the boys from Damn Daniel and Brielle Milla. DeGeneres hasn't announced a launch date, but is already the number one content creator for the digital content online. Cats are the newest A-listers in South Korea due to a live stream broadcast of stray cats eating. The show began as a way for a man to monitor a cat he had been taking care of. Since then, the show has expanded to an average of 110,000 viewers a month. And that'll wrap it up for today's news update. Stick around after the break and we will have another interview. <laughs> Welcome back, and I'm Nadia Keshvi, and this is my best friend and teammate, Bryce Hyde. So Bryce, what's your major? I'm um, an exercise science major, getting ready to graduate in May, a couple, couple days. <laughs> and you just had an internship, so mm -hmm. tell me about your internship a little bit. Um, it was in the cardiac and pulmonary rehab department of LMH. Um, we were just working one-on-one -on -one with patients every day, um, people who were post-op from like, um, a heart surgery or different kinds of surgeries so yeah it was really fun. Do you think you like got a good sense of what work would be like? Absolutely yeah um, I'm a big believer that I will for myself I learn more one-on-one um, -on -one with people rather than in a classroom going through a book and stuff so yeah I definitely learned how to interact with patients a lot better so. And what is your like plan to do now since you're about to graduate? Um, still kind of trying to figure that out. Um, had a few job interviews for just um, some bottom end medical um, jobs to kind of get my foot in the door for to just better my resume for PA school. And Bryce is my best friend, and now that she's a senior, I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> next year because I'm only going to be a junior. But um, so Bryce, if you could give one piece of advice to someone, like an incoming freshman, mm -hmm. what would you give them? Um, I would say live in the moment every day. Um, don't worry about the future because it will come. It will play itself out. And um, yeah, just have fun, enjoy the moment, and live in it. <laughs> For sure. Um, also, so Bryce is on the swim and dive team with me. Do you want to touch base on that a little bit, like how the season was? Yeah, how? absolutely. Um, my senior year, last year, I'm retired now, but it was a good year. We finished the highest we ever have at conference. Um, so definitely made a mark in history there. Um, it went by so fast. I feel like we just had our first day of practice yeah, yesterday. Um, sure. Just keeps going faster and faster. But yeah, um, good season. We finished well and had fun doing it too. Exactly. Well, <laughs> That was it, and thank you, Bryce, for coming today. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we will have the weather next. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. 
Well guys, this is my last weather broadcast of the year, but we're ending on a very high note. I made sure to order a very favorable weather pattern for this last, well, for this upcoming week or so. Starting yesterday, actually looking at our almanac, it was pretty beautiful yesterday. It was about 71 degrees, had a low of 46. The good news for us is that this weather pattern is going to continue today, going to be a gorgeous day. Already about 70 degrees outside right now, no clouds, no real wind. It's pretty it's gorgeous out right now, 76 degrees, sunny, have a light wind out of the north. Tomorrow's stop day looks to be beautiful outside, 83 degrees. So if you're taking a study break tomorrow, make sure to go outside and have fun because it should be a beautiful day. Looking ahead to our five-day forecast, things are going to warm up just a tad bit on Saturday, partly cloudy, 85 degrees. Sunday, 76 might have some thunderstorms at night, and then Monday, fairly similar to Sunday, might have some severe weather on Monday, some strong storms. It's a little early to tell right now, so keep an eye on it. Shouldn't be too concerning though. And then Tuesday, we're gonna round off the week with 81 degrees. That's gonna do it for our weather today and our show. I'd like the rest of the crew to come on stage, say hi, or bye, I should say. <laughs> Come on, get, yeah. The crew. <laughs> Everybody. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. We love all of you. I feel like we all got better. So have a great summer. School's out. School's out. <laughs>